there is some big gangs in the nightclubs or bars that you could go into. Okay? There is. Not all of them, but you could end up going to a bar. Do not shit in your pants if you think, oh my god, there's a big gang over there. Oh fuck, uh, are, we get, are we in the wrong place? Uh, no. This is the nice comfort factor of LA. If you don't fuck with a gang member in LA, they won't fuck with you back. Now, here's the thing. If you do fuck with them, they'll pull a gun on you and kill you. Peter. Wah, 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 wah. All right, guys and girls, we're going to be talking about L.A., Los Angeles today. If you're going to go, a lot of people are talking about going to the West Coast this year, and some people have brought up about going to L.A. They know I was living there for two and a half years. What to do? I'm going to try and give you some insight here, try and be useful where what to do, where to go, the, the, the attractions, how long you should stay in L.A. And let's get into it, because, guys, you know, I loved Los Angeles when I was living there. I absolutely fucking loved it. I was there for acting and I just a different life too, really. And it's not really a tourist attraction place, really, at the end of the day. Yes, there's a couple of things that you can do, absolutely. I would recommend to anybody that you spend two days, maybe three, max, in LA. Because eventually, you can do all the stuff. You can pretty much do a lot of it in the first two days. Now, depending on what you want, of course, there's beautiful beaches down by Santa Monica. You can check out Malibu, where all the stars live, but Malibu's very spread out, wide open. It's a great place to check out, and there's two supermarkets in Malibu, only two. So, hey, if you want to see a, a celebrity, <laughs> hang out one of, the, one of the supermarkets and you'll probably bump into somebody. Robert Downey Jr. will probably be shopping in one of them at some stage. But anyway, let's check it out, guys. So as much as I loved LA, it can be a very dodgy place. Very dodgy. LA is a very, very acting, producing, directing town. That's where the, the heart of the entertainment industry is in the world. London is big, yes, New York can be big, but LA is the, the heart, the pulse. It's got everything there. I mean, that's where a lot of the movie stars, they try and break it out into L.A., even if they could be living in New York, okay? A big celebrity could be living in New York. They get a phone call from their agent, they sign up for a movie deal, and boom, they're on the next plane over to L.A. to have a sit-down meeting with their agent and producers or whoever it is. So, again, a lot of the beating, the beating heartbeat is in L.A. Wonderful weather all year round. I mean, it's incredible. Even in the summertime, you probably get up to 40 degrees. It's a very dry kind of heat, desert feel about it. Wonderful. If you like that heat, you're going to love it. And I remember it was my second year of living in L.A. And I went over in January. I was home for Christmas. I got on the plane in January. I was there until September. Start of September, came home. And that was an eight-month stint. And this is no joke, ladies and gentlemen. In January, all the way through up to September, there was not one cloudy day in all that time period. It was sunshine every single fucking day. How I remember that, I don't know. It's beyond me because how can you remember every single day? But do you know what? It's the fact that it there wasn't cloud. <laughs> I think you just remember it. It's simply wonderful weather all year round even in the in the in the winter time guys so if you are heading on heading on a plane over there even in the winter time very cold mornings very cold it'll still be very sunny in the morning but if you live in let's say Ireland or any of my overseas listeners if you're living in Canada you're used to those cold mornings or if you're in America you're used to some cold mornings if you're on the east coast or wherever you are LA is the same thing. You'll have like freezing cold mornings, but during the afternoon, it can get up to like 20, 25 degrees, depending on what's going on with the climate. But all year round, fantastic weather. And rare, uh, sorry, rain is so rare in LA that it's a novelty. 
Even I, as an Irish man in LA, I remember it was year one and I was like, oh my god, I haven't seen rain for ages. And it was months and months and months. Even I was like, oh my god, it's lovely, it's a br- bit of a break. Now, I'm a major sun guy. I love the sun, I love the heat, and even I loved the rain. So, even if you do land in LA, guys, and you, you arrive on the the bad day where there's rain, chances are it's going to clear up during that day, or it's going to be actually perfectly fine the next day. Clear skies, blue skies, beautiful sunshine. You'll love the weather. Now, one thing I would say, guys, for you. These are the musts, okay? Number one, you've got to rent a car. If you don't rent a car in LA, you are fucked. I mean, you really are. You're not going to be able to get around to all the tourist attractions. If you do, you're going to have to have money in your pocket, that's for sure. Taxis or buses. LA is a very, very spread out city. It's huge. Now... LA is kind of made up of, I remember one of my buddies actually said it when I was living in LA, he said, Peter, LA is so big, it's like 11 cities put together and they just called it LA. It's it's huge, guys. I mean, really huge. And you, you do, you need a car. I mean, you could be on the one end, let's say you could be in Beverly Hills. You might want to go south to, let's say, Santa Monica, which really, if you were as the crow flies, if you were in a helicopter, It's not that far away, right? This part now, I'm saying, okay? It's still in the the same area. But it could take you an hour, hour and a half to get down to Santa Monica from Beverly Hills. Which really, guys, I don't know the mileage, but it... If you probably... If you were able to fly and you went down there yourself as the crow flies, it'd probably take you five or ten minutes. But in a car, hour, hour and a half. Buses are a bit of a nightmare. They do work, yeah, it... They all work fine, but they're very spread out, guys. Very spread out. You could have a bus stop on Sunset Boulevard, and you'd have to walk a half a mile, three quarters of a mile, up the other direction to get another bus. So you got to rent a car, guys, if you're in L.A., okay? It's a must. And if you don't, well, you're going to struggle. Trust me on that one. Now, okay, let's have a look. I've just written down notes here, guys, so I'm just going to go through them, okay? So bear with me. And Santa Monica is a great place to check out. Sunset Boulevard, great area. West LA, great place to to visit. Let's start with Santa Monica. Santa Monica, wonderful spot. It's down by the beach. You're out of the LA industry type. People are very relaxed down there. Now, we're going to get into LA stuff in in a minute, but... It's a great place to check out, and it's a bit out of L.A. Yes, there's some great bars and restaurants down there. You'd be, you could be walking around Santa Monica during the day and nighttime going to restaurants, and everybody's in their t-shirt and shorts and sandals, and they're drinking their bottles of wine, sitting out in the patio with just lovely heat. It's wonderful, guys. Everybody's so relaxed down there. And L.A. is funny. It's, it's very opposite to New York. New York is all about the hustle and bustle and, you know, Wall Street and get the job done up at 5 and getting to bed at 2 a.m. and getting three hours sleep and going again the next day. L.A. is very, it's the total opposite of that. People go to L.A. to just relax, chill out. If you're in the Santa Monica area now, sorry, that's what I mean. And it's definitely a great place to check out. And it's not that far from Sunset Boulevard and Beverly Hills and Hollywood Boulevard. And you get on the, oh, is it the 5 or the 405? I can't remember now. I think it's the 405. You go south, uh, which is the motorway, dual carriageway. And probably, depending on traffic, take you an hour maybe, depending. But it's a wonderful place to check out. There's no necessarily attractions in Santa Monica. Next door to Santa Monica, you've got Venice Beach, which is a bit of a, I suppose you could call a bit of a hippie beach are uh, an alternative beach more so than anything and i think they 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 film white men can't jump if anybody remembers that uh, woody harrelson and wesley snipes and they've got a lot of basketball courts down there crime wouldn't be very big now in venice beach in santa monica definitely not you know you'd have a couple of gangs down there but everybody keeps themselves guys down there so it, it's a very, very safe place, Santa Monica. And you've got a lot of police down there too. 
and they're around all the time. And that's a nice feeling too, you know, and it does keep a lot of the uh, the boys, the big gangs out there, and even the gangs are keeping an eye at what they do down there. But you wouldn't have them down, many down there anyway in the first place. So definitely, Santa Monica, fantastic, wonderful restaurants, wonderful bars, wonderful uh, uh, coffee shops, just great place to check out. A couple of good hotels down there too. It's been a while since I've been down there, so just check out some of the hotels. You might be paying a bit of an arm and leg for them, but if you want a nice, relaxed atmosphere, check out Santa Monica. Okay, now let's look at Hollywood Boulevard. Now, Hollywood Boulevard is great. There's a couple of, there's a couple of a, uh, tourist attractions. Number one on the list, you've obviously got the Oscar Theater, where they have the Oscars, the Kodak Theater. And they hold, they hold it there every year. Great place to check out. You can do tours in the Oscar Theater. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's good. You can buy the ticket. You can go in. And <coughs> on the tour itself, you can actually sit down where the stars have actually sat, where you watch it on TV. So if you're into that sort of thing, definitely you should check that out. And in fact, they even have... For instance, if George Clooney was attending the Oscars the year before, or just the, this year, and you've just gone, and the, the, the Oscars were on, and you've, you've arrived in LA after the Oscars, let's say George Clooney was sitting on the far left, on the right aisle. They'll have the signs, and they'll have a notice, and a, a display saying George Clooney. So in other words, George Clooney sat here. And you can sit down there, and it's very cool. It's very cool. And you'd be surprised, actually, how small the Kodak Theater is. It looks massive on screen, but it's... Yeah, you just... You gotta go see it. You gotta go see it. And not to mention that, the... Next to the Kodak Theater, there's a couple of shops just on the upstairs area here, right? It's uh, it's outside the theater itself, but they've kind of turned in the Kodak Theater into a bit of a... A bit of a mall, so to speak, like a shopping mall, an outdoor shopping mall. So there's a bit of bit of action going on. I think just opposite the road, you've got Jimmy Kimmel's studio where they they film live. So check that out too. And then you've got the Chinese theater, where a lot of the the premieres, especially back in the days of like the 1940s, 1950s Hollywood, even the 60s, where they premiered a lot of the movies. That was like the main place that they'd premiere movies. In fact, even still to this day, they do it. But it's more known for the 40s, 50s, you know. You got Brando down there, De Niro in, in the 60s and 70s. I mean, you got all the stars down there. And the Chinese theater is literally a walk away. You come out of the Oscar theater, uh, sorry, the Kodak theater, and you take a right, and it's only, what? 200 yards down the road. It's nothing. It's nothing. And you'll see a lot of Batman, Supermans, the Joker, people who are impersonating these characters outside as well on the walk down. It's fantastic, guys. It really is. And of course, not let's not forget the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You've got all the, the stars that are ingrained into the ground on the tarmac. And of course, you'll see all of those. They stretch all the way down Hollywood Boulevard, but they also go down, uh, I think it's at Fairfax Boulevard as well, but You'll be able to see them. They're they're everywhere. Uh, you've got Nicholson, Brando, James Dean, Meryl Streep, Julia Roberts. I mean, all of the stars. Most of them have a star walk of fame on the on the road. So it's great to see. It really is. Now, if you want, a couple of things about Hollywood Boulevard. There's one or two areas that are a little bit dodgy about it. Not that you'll get killed or knifed or gunned. Not at all. Okay, take that out of your head. But during the day, and well, even the nighttime, a couple of things which is very weird. If you're a smoker, and if you're sitting out in one of the, let's say, one of the bars, because you can sit outside in one of the bars now on the, the, the boulevard itself, so you can people watch people as you're going by, etc. It was so weird. When I went there before, I used to put my box of cigarettes, I'd have a couple of drinks, cigarettes, put my box of cigarettes on the table, outside right now again people are walking by and i'm not joking you i had a full box of cigarettes one time and my friends were with me at the time and i within i'd say 30 minutes i had about 20 to 30 
homeless people come up and, and bum a fag off me. A cigarette. Hey man, can I get a cigarette? And after about the third one, I went, fuck this man. And I had about three people bum a cigarette off me within five minutes, 10 minutes maybe, okay? Like it was, I was like, what the fuck? It was like vultures waiting, circling around, and then boom, they're going into their, for their prey. It was ridiculous. Took the cigarettes off the table. No way, not again. So if you're a cigarette smoker, guys, leave the cigarettes in your fucking pocket or your bag, okay? Because they will be all over you. Get it, bombing a fag. And actually, it was funny because cigarettes when I was living there were like $5, which was nothing for a box of cigarettes. Like, that's for 20 cigarettes. And $5, okay, I actually went down there for the laugh one day. All right, this is no joke. After this happened the first time, I went down again a couple of months later and I was with one of the boys. I was telling him that, oh, hey, listen, buddy, do you know, remember the last time I was down here and I told him about the cigarette story. So for the fun of it, I bought a box of cigarettes then I bought one more just to see, right? Leave them on a table and we timed it to see how long it would take for me to get rid of all 20 cigarettes. 37 minutes. And quite honestly, that, w that was a bit slow. I genu genuinely would have thought they would have gone quicker than that. 37 minutes, I left one box of cigarettes on the table and here's the best part. I didn't even open this box of cigarettes. The plastic was still on the fucking things and they still had the cheek and balls to come over and ask for a cigarette. And 37 minutes later, all the cigarettes were gone. You should have seen my friend's face. He was like, I don't fucking believe. And I, t I said, I told you, man, I told you. So, <laughs> but you know what? Maybe it could be good fun. If you want to try it out, and I don't know the price of cigarettes right now over in LA, so I can't uh, speak very educatedly on that, but if they are cheap and you want to try it, try it out, see what happens. You, you'd be amazed. Now, don't worry, the homeless in fairness, they're not, they're not looking for fights for people here, okay? They're not, they're just bum, fucking bums looking for, for money or cigarettes, you know? And they, and they like, it's not that they won't leave you alone. They will leave you alone, they'll leave you alone, but they'll still come over to you and still get try and get something out of you like they won't they won't miss you so just uh, keep in keep your eye on, out on that one uh, okay so where do we have all right tattoos if you want to get a tattoo in LA well fuck me pink Hollywood Boulevard is the place there is so many tattoo parlors or tattoo shops whatever you call them sorry I don't know so excuse me on that one there's so many of these shops around on Hollywood Boulevard itself. It just It's insane how many there are. And they're going from east to west, up towards Beverly Hills, and then going the opposite direction. So many, if you want to get a tattoo, there is the place. Now, I've heard good stories about the place. They are hygienic, apparently, and they're good, so... You know, you're, you're not getting just some random dickhead. And a lot of the stars, too, use these parlors or shops, tattoo parlors, shops, whatever that is. They use these places. So there's quite a few of them that are actually quite famous. And so they need to be on the ball here. Like, they need to know what they're doing. So I think they have a good rep. I'm not into tattoos, so I never got one. But that is certainly the place if you want to get one, guys. Now, off Hollywood Boulevard... There's also Sunset Boulevard. Now, Sunset is quite entertaining. There's quite a few clubs down there. Now, what you want to do is get down towards the Saddle Ranch. Now, Saddle Ranch is a very... What would you call a Saddle Ranch? It's very... American barbecue grill type of restaurant. Or restaurant slash bar. Now, sometimes they'll have live bands in there. They've got one of those bulls, you know, those kind of, like, uh, games that you... And you have to hang on to the road to the bull. And if you don't, you get thrown off. And it, it can be quite entertaining, in fairness. But it's a it's a good place to just kind of kick back. So if you're not dressing up or you want something nice and, nice and cheap and cheerful, the Saddle Ranch is definitely the place to go. Even though, after coronavirus, it's probably not very cheap. But, hey... It's definitely cheaper than going to one of the, the big nightclubs anyway, that's for sure. So it's definitely worth checking that out. And the Saddle Ranch is quite a good place to start with, as in there's going to be bars and clubs around the Saddle Ranch area. Now, 
The nightclubs, I can't recommend any to you, my apologies, because it's been quite a while. And the industry changes quite a lot in, in LA where, for instance, when I was there, there was a, a nightclub called Shelter. That was one of the big ones in, in LA at the time, like the one of the big ones where, oh, where were you last night? Oh, we were in Shelter. No way, were you? You actually got in? Oh my God. Well, yeah, like people were on about that bullshit. And so again, Shelter could have changed after one year, and it did. And then it was Privilege. That's right, it went from Shelter to Privilege. God only knows what it's called now. It's probably in the same area. And if you come out of the Saddle Ranch, you take a right. But definitely check out, I mean, you'll probably find it on Google, Nightclubs in on Sunset Boulevard, something like that, and you'll find them. Now, if you are going up to clubs, it is a dream for women. An absolute fucking dream. Women get in free, especially if you're dolled up, you're looking good. The nightclub men, they will let you in straight through the ropes, whereas most of the, the guys have to queue up. Now, if you're a bit of a Billy bullshitter, to good talker, you can literally bullshit your way in past the queue. Now, I've done that quite a few times, and it was quite successful. I had the Irish accent on me, I was confident, and most of the time, you see, the problem is, is that if you come across, if you try and pretend to the bouncers that you're a bit of a celebrity or you're up and coming, the problem for them is they'll have a doubt. Now, you see, if you were in any other city in the world, like most cities, if you're trying to come across as some celebrity or trying to give them a hint that you're a celebrity, like, you know, not being a dick about it, but kind of subtly throwing in that, oh, this guy could be up and coming here. They have a worry in L.A., because it's the heart of everything in the entertainment industry, right? I mean, you could have Russell Crowe coming up to the door within four minutes. I mean, genuinely, you could have Martin Scorsese, Leonardo DiCaprio, literally coming up to your nightclub that night. So they're in, your, in the industry, and all of a sudden, if they have a feeling that this guy might be someone, they're afraid to actually stop you on the door because, oh shit, we don't want to be... Fuck. And then they're thinking, oh God, am I just out of date? Have I not seen this movie or TV program? Or, oh God, am I, am, am I losing track of the celebrity world here? So you can put the fear of God on them. You can bullshit your way in quite easy in LA. Like really now, genuinely, you can bullshit your way in. But for women, it's a dream, heaven. Because women will be allowed in the door. Men will be just all over you and trying to buy you drinks. A lot of sleazy men in LA, ladies. Okay, so be careful of that one. Like real fucking sleazy, just just so transparent in what they're trying to do. They'll buy you loads of drinks and hey, if you want to get a couple of drinks off them, do, but... And I wouldn't say that they're, you know, you're not in danger now. I'm not going to say that, right? In general. But I would just be careful too, because they might put a bit of pressure on you too that hey I just bought her a couple of drinks and some of these guys will assume that if they buy you a couple of drinks that's it job done I have her some of these guys are like that especially when if they're producers or some directors up and coming you know their egos is big they think they can just literally wine and dine you a couple of drinks job done and quite a lot of that happens in LA guys so there's a lot of actresses, actors that will use and abuse people, and it does happen, and, and some of these guys get what they want, and hey, some even women producers or directors, they will try and take advantage of a guy as well. Believe you me, it happens. So it's a... <laughs> but anyway, that's the kind of the insight I can give you on an, an LA here. And where are we now? Okay. Now, if you want to check out, by the way, I did a podcast on this. I did an episode, I used to work as a strip club DJ, and I have an episode on that there recently, but if you want to check out, or if you want to have a bit of fun, there is a strip club called The Seventh Vale, and it's just on Sunset Boulevard. Just when you come down, if you're heading south from Hollywood Boulevard, you go down towards Sunset, you take a right onto Sunset, and Seventh Vale's on the left. And You can Google it anyway where it is. But it's definitely, uh, you can ask them, tell them, or if there's a guy called Sal there, who's the manager, he probably fucking still is, of course. Tell him, uh, tell him I say hello. <laughs> Even though he's a right fucking wanker, but still, uh, he was, uh, but do you know what? If you're looking for a strip club, check out Seventh Vale. It can be a bit of fun. Okay, now let's check out Beverly Hills, right? Beverly Hills, awesome place. It just, oh. 
god, I love that place. It's so well kept. It's such a... The, the buildings are amazing. I mean, you're going to see Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Rolls Royces just driving by, by you every four fucking minutes. And, you know, you could see some celebrities too walking along, going shopping. Now, I wouldn't be banking on it either, but definitely you should check out the shops on Rodeo Drive, or O-D-E-O. That is the main street, or well, in this case, drive, where all the shops are. A couple of restaurants and bars off that as well, uh, where I used to actually DJ, not in a strip club now, but I used to DJ in a cocktail bar called Nick's Martini. And that was one block off. Uh, Rodeo Drive for the love of God I cannot remember the name uh, Canyon Drive I think I think it was Canyon Drive anyway guys Nick's Martini N-I-C-S Martini that's one block off Rodeo Drive and great cocktails up there great food up there great atmosphere up there and on a Thursday night uh, it's it, it really does take off now the place won't be busy after 11 o'clock so it's definitely a place that you can warm up and get some beer, get some cocktails, whatever it is. Great service in there. Fantastic. Highly recommended. Nick's Martini just off Beverly Hills. Okay, so where else do what else do we have? So we've got Nick's Martini, Beverly Hills. Oh, and of course the Wilshire Hotel, where Pretty Woman Pretty Woman was. Uh, well, I'm not sure if they actually filmed much of the movie in that hotel. But it was definitely based on, as in, when Richard Gere goes to L.A., he's he's meant to be staying in the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. Of course, we don't know how much filming they did in the actual hotel itself. But definitely, guys, the Beverly Wilshire, that's where, apparently, Pretty Woman is shot. And check it out. You can get some food in the restaurant downstairs. It's literally across the road from Rodeo Drive, at, at the bottom end of Rodeo Drive. And yeah, you should check it out. It's good, good fun. Good drinks in there actually as well, I remember that. And the tours in Beverly Hills, guys. Now, I would be careful on this one, the star maps. So maybe some of you know about this or not, but the star maps are, are these maps where you can buy in, you know, like uh, any 7-Eleven, which is some sort of supermarket, okay? Their version of a supermarket, or any kind of tourist shop, okay, where you can buy ornaments. The star maps supposedly give you the location and address of celebrities. So, now that, for instance, you can buy your, your map, you would open it up, and you see, let's say, example now, Robert De Niro's house. They'll have it literally starred with a star on the map to show you where it is. And then you can take one of these bus tours, and they'll bring you around. Now, I think a lot of them are legit. Now, as in... They've got inside information, or they know about this, that, oh, Robert De Niro's actually living there, or Leonardo DiCaprio lives over here. Now, look, it doesn't mean that Leonardo DiCaprio's still living there, or he's going to be there on the day, okay? So, don't expect too much. The chances are they are probably telling you the truth. There is a couple of dodgy ones now, where they'll give you the star map, and they'll try and sell it to you. Don't buy a star map if you're driving yourself. Like... I would only trust it if you're getting in the star map and you're getting one of the tour rides, the bus rides, because that's an official tour then. And they're actually bringing you to the houses. Now, does De Niro own the house anymore, like I was saying? Maybe, maybe not. But for their information and what they've heard, they're going to give you the, the legit, to them, to their to the best of their information, they're going to give you the le legit information. So just don't buy one of those star maps off someone off the street. Like, if they're offering you bus rides as well, well, then, obviously, they have that package, and you can trust those. But there is a couple of star maps out there now that they'll literally just give you, oh, here, there you go, man. And they've literally just licked on a fucking sticker on that morning and then tried to sell it to you right there and then. Okay? So just be careful of that one. Okay, so what else do we have? Downtown LA. Right. Now, here's a big one, guys. If you are going to L.A., do not stay in downtown L.A. Number one, it's a shithole. Number two, there's not much action going down there in terms of nightclubs and bars. Three, there's a lot of homeless down there. It's not a, a, a pulsing place to be, uh, a pulsating place to be. 
And yes, there's some skyscrapers down there and it looks, you know, it looks to be legit, but there's nothing going on down there. If you want to stay where the action is in LA, I would seriously suggest somewhere on Sunset Boulevard, close as possible to the Saddle Ranch, are Beverly Hills or even West LA. Now, West LA, so if you're on Sunset Boulevard, you can go west towards Beverly Hills. Before you get to Beverly Hills, you've got the West LA area. Now, this is mainly the gay area. Now, it's, it's not all gay, okay? In other words, you can still go down there and there's shops and restaurants and bars and stuff that <laughs> you're allowed in, you know what I mean? It's not, they haven't just taken over the gay people. No, not at all. It's a great place to be. In fact, I even had a friend who used to work in a gay bar who was str a straight guy, but it was a great job. I mean, bar bartending, uh, jobs over there if you get the night shift it's like it's like gold getting one of those jobs and he was lucky to get that job and he worked in in a gay bar over there and I used to go down every, every now and then with him and I would be doing nothing on a night out he'd be working that night he'd go come here just come down and hang out with me at the bar and I'd be like all right fuck it so I'd literally just sit at the bar when he was working he'd give me a couple of drinks every now and then da, da, da. we had a great we had a great time great time and the gay guys they're not sleazy over there look obviously you're gonna get some weird kind of gay people but you get weird straight people too you know so it's not that it's totally different but there's a great atmosphere down there <clears throat> and the gay guys if you're a guy listening to this and if you're going it, the guys the gay guys aren't gonna be harassing you you know, they're they're nice guys. And you just make it clear and obvious to them that hey somebody, I'm not interested, I'm I'm straight, sorry. They'll leave you alone. They're not gonna fuck around with you. And like there's some great clubs down there, great music in there. Like they play, you know, the techno like dance stuff. Some great fucking tunes down there. And you know, I've met plenty of straight women down there. Plenty of straight women throughout the years when I was in LA, in the gay bars. It was actually a great place to actually meet women. <laughs> Because the women aren't intimidated by some sleazy guy in a straight bar. So, definitely, West LA is definitely a place I would check out. Whether you are gay or straight, it doesn't matter. And what else do we have? Okay, so we're just covering downtown LA as well. Don't stay down there, guys. Stay up by Sunset Boulevard or towards West LA area as well and Beverly Hills. Now, if you're going towards closer to Beverly Hills, definitely a lot more expensive, that's for sure. But if you're on the Sunset Boulevard towards West LA, if you can get a hotel or, uh, sorry, hotel or hostel around there, you're in good shape there. Okay, that's really where the, the beating nightlife is around that area. Now, what else do we have? Okay, the valley. Now, I don't know if you've ever watched Entourage or you've heard the this phrase called the valley in... TV programs or even movies. Now, the Valley is a place in LA. Now, the Valley is about, well, it's north of Hollywood Boulevard. <clears throat> I used to actually live in North Hollywood and Burbank. Now, Burbank is in the Valley, they call it. <coughs> Sorry, guys, excuse me, I'm coughing here. Now, if you're, let's say, at Hollywood Boulevard by the Kodak Theater, the Oscar Theater, you will take a, you come down the end of Hollywood Boulevard, take a left, you're going north, and you're going up towards the Hollywood Bowl, by the way, guys. Very good, very highly recommend going there. It's an outdoor concert area. It's brilliant, they, I mean, they've got all the big stars that go to the Hollywood Bowl. Uh, Elton John, George Michael when he was around back in the day, Sting, I mean, it, all, all the big American bands, you know, ACDC, everybody, everybody you can know, all the famous bands and singers, they all have concerts on at the Hollywood Bowl. So check out as well the Hollywood Bowl because it's only... <sighs> you could actually walk there from Hollywood Boulevard, but it's only a three or four minute drive north up just up the hill from Hollywood Boulevard, the Hollywood Bowl. Check that out. And then if you go north again of Hollywood Bowl, you go on to the... Oh, I think it's... Oh, God. Is it the 5 motorway? It could be the 5 motorway. I can't remember, guys. But you literally jump onto the motorway for one exit. So you're getting onto the motorway. Past the Hollywood Bowl. Onto the motorway. The 101, I think. Past the motorway. Onto the 101. Or whatever motorway it is. And you're on there for about a half a mile. And then you're turning off the first exit to the valley. 
And then this is the place where you've got North Hollywood, uh, Van Nuys, Burbank, all sorts of different places in the valley. And believe it or not, this is so freaky. This is no joke, by the way. The valley is 10 degrees hotter than Hollywood Boulevard, Sunset Boulevard, Beverly Hills, everything. And it's so fucking close. I've done this in my car. In fact, if you've ever watched Entourage, they actually do that when they're going to watch Vince's premiere, right? They're actually counting the degrees as it goes up as they're driving. You can literally watch the degrees go up in your car as you're fucking driving that quick. And it's only, I mean, it feels like about a half a mile away. Now, from Hollywood Boulevard, once you get on that motorway, it's about a half a mile off. You take the first turn off, then you're taking a right up the hill again towards Burbank. Burbank, great place to go, but before we talk about that, once you actually get up, turn off, the temperature starts rising really fucking quick. It's 10 degrees hotter. This is no joke, ladies and gentlemen, and it happens so fucking fast. Within 10 minutes of a drive, the temperature has gone up 10 degrees. No, maybe not even 10 minutes. I mean, if you're driving at nighttime with no traffic, within three to five minutes, maybe not even three to five minutes, the temperature has gone up 10 degrees. It's, it, that's almost like a tourist attraction in itself. <laughs> but I would definitely check out Burbank in the valley. Uh, Burbank, you've got Warner Brothers Studio. Great tour in there, so you can see all of the rides and stuff, are the, the, the attractions they have in there. Universal Studios, that's also as well up in that area. Universal Studios, fantastic day out. You've got all the roller, kind of, well, mini roller coaster rides. Uh, great place to go. Cool restaurants, cool bars up there as well. Uh, a lot of tourists go there. And just cool rides, you know? All the kids love them. You've got the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You go into that kind of, you know, that horror, horror house where you're getting the shit scared out of you every two seconds. Then at the end, all of a sudden, you think you're at the end of it. And all of a sudden, you see the Texas Chainsaw Massacre fucker coming running up behind you. And he's got the sound effects too, so it actually sounds like a proper chainsaw. I mean, it would scare the fucking shit out of you. But definitely, 100% worth going. Universal Studios so I want to talk about as well just a couple of other things right and the do's and don'ts so we're we're about we're nearly at the end of this now definitely they're the kind of the real main tourist attractions guys if you want to branch out of LA definitely uh, first on my list would be Vegas Vegas is if you're gonna drive Vegas is only a four four and a half hour drive to Vegas from LA uh, We'll talk about more about Vegas as we go along. San Diego is only a two-hour drive south of LA. Great place. San Fran, that's about a six-hour to seven-hour drive, so it might not look a huge distance away, but, well, if you're driving, it's a six to seven-hour drive. It's not much, but don't be expecting an hour drive. It's a six or seven-hour drive San Fran from LA. Now, a couple of things, guys. You see in movies all the time, the tough guys and the gangs, okay? All this stuff. Here's one thing I've experienced and I fucking know in LA. There is some big gangs in the nightclubs or bars that you could go into, okay? There is. Not all of them, but you could end up going to a bar. Do not shit in your pants if you think, oh my god, there's a big gang over there. Oh fuck, uh, are, we get, are we in the wrong place? Uh, no. This is the nice comfort factor of L.A. If you don't fuck with a gang member in L.A., they won't fuck with you back. Now here's the thing. If you do fuck with them, they'll pull a gun on you and kill you. Now, like I said, these guys will not fuck with you. They won't look for trouble. Okay? You won't have a gang member come over to you on the street and just pick a random fight with you for no reason. That's the comfort factor about this. There's no gangs out there that will do this. But if you end up fucking with them, they're not going to take any shit and they could, there's a big chance they will pop out a gun and maybe blow your head off. Do you think I'm drastic? Am I exaggerating? Hell no, I'm not. Just don't fuck with them. And you're fine. Okay? They will not fuck with you unless you fuck with them. Now, what else? Tipping, guys. 
tipping, big thing in America, as a lot of people know. Uh, what I would suggest, if you're not very used to it, or can it work to your advantage in LA? Well, I'll put it this way to you. I used to go into a couple of bars. Now, they usually say it's a dollar a drink, a tip. So let's say you're buying five drinks for people. It's your round. If you're going up getting five beers, well then, minimum, the barman would be, or the bar woman would be expecting minimum a $5 tip, a dollar a drink. Now I know that sounds like a lot for a lot of people I know, and tipping, it's very hard for Europeans or Asians or whoever to get used to tipping. Of course it is, because it's not in our nature to be tipping people at a bar or a restaurant. You know, in, in general now I'm speaking. But if you are going to do it, guys, you'll get, yeah, you'll dollar a drink, that's fine. But all of a sudden, if the bar is eight or nine, ten people deep, okay, there's a huge fucking crowd. The barman, our bar girl, will look after you. So in other words, what I used to do, depending on the place, I used to, I know, I'm not going out buying five, six, seven fucking drinks for people here. No, I'm buying one for maybe just me and my buddy, okay, so there'll be two of us. Now, I'm not given, when I know it's going to be a busy night, I'm going to, okay, do you know what now? Let's get up to the bar now because it's kind of quiet. I'll get the two drinks. So instead of giving them $2 tip, I'm giving them, let's say, a $5 tip. Now, and then they're like, oh, well, thanks, man. Thanks. Appreciate it. The more money you give them, the more they'll look after you. And what happened with me, the, I would give them a nice tip, $5 tip instead of a two. They'd remember me. Go, okay, right, this guy's a big tipper. Now, this, must be, this might be obvious, guys, but here's where it really gets better for you. I remember going into a place, I'd give them a good tip for the first round, then they know, right, I'll keep an eye on this guy, and I'll remember him. You could go up to the bar midway through the night, it could be eight, ten crowd deep, and they will literally find you in the crowd, at the back of the crowd, and pull you and go, hey, man, yeah, come on over here, and they will literally call you over, get you up to the top of the bar and go, yeah, what you want, man? Because they know that Peter or whoever is going to tip well. Very, very important, guys, if you want good service in there, okay? Now, I know some of you, if you're not used to tipping, it can be a bit of a balls, but there's an advantage too. You know, isn't it worth, instead of being eight, nine, ten people deep, isn't it worth just giving an extra little tip at the start? So that's what I would reckon, guys. But if you want to do a minimum, a dollar a drink is... Pretty much the standard. Now, other thing. Stopping at red lights. Now, this, you'd be amazed. A lot of people don't know this one on the rules of the road in LA if you're getting a car. Now, when you approach a red light, if you're turning right at the red light, you're able to break the red light. Now, let me explain. So let's say, guys, you're coming up and it's a two or three lane straight road you're coming up to the next turn off and it's a red light and you're getting into the right lane okay you're indicating you're pulling in you're in your stop at the lights and you're turning right now what you need to do first of all is stop the car legally you need to actually physically stop the car now once you've stopped the car you can literally start turning off and start m creeping out onto the road and actually start going right. You can actually turn to the right, break the red light, and keep going. Now, of course, you've got to keep an eye out for pedestrians, of course, too, because they'll be walking past. But you can actually do that. If you're turning right at a, at a red light, you need to stop the car. Then you can start creeping up every so slowly and just keep an eye on oncoming traffic. If there's nothing, keep an eye out that there's no pedestrians. If there's no pedestrians, you can actually make your way. But the most important thing, guys, you need to physically stop the car. Okay, I know I've st said that about three or four times already, but if a cop sees you, policeman sees you, and let's say you're coming up to a red light, but you don't stop the car, he will pull you. If you stop the car and keep going, then he will do nothing. Another thing as well, make sure your tail lights are working. Now, if you're renting a car over in LA, of course it should be working, right? But hey, you'd never know. And that was, that's one piece of really good advice if you're driving on the road, guys, okay? Because you never know who had the car before you. You could have had some boy racer who rented the car before you. He, he brought it back in one condition, but you know, wear and tear, right? So I would check your tail lights. 
Policemen in LA, do not fuck around with this. If they see a, uh, a taillight out and you've only got one brake light working, they will stop you. No joke, they will stop you instantly. I got stopped for it before. I know many other people that have got stopped. So just before you get into your car, even maybe every day, if you know if you're there in LA for two or three days, hell, anywhere in America that you're driving, if you're coming out of your hotel room, just make sure your taillights are working. Otherwise, the police will fucking stop you. And the last thing before we leave, if you do get stopped by the police over there, make sure this, you stay in your car. I even made this mistake and I was lucky that I didn't get shot. In other words, there's a big thing about if the police pull you over, okay, and they put on the flashing lights and you decide, okay, you put on your, your indicator and you turn off and you pull off onto the side of the road and you stop your car. Do not, under any circumstances, get out of the car because they see that as a threat. They see that as, oh shit, this guy might be coming, coming at me with a gun. Okay, so make sure just stay in your car, keep your seatbelt turn, turned on, keep your seatbelt on at all times and let them come over to your car. And I would say that about anywhere in America. That's a big thing for cops in America. You get pulled over, stay seating in your car with the engine turned on and your seatbelt on. And don't fucking move. Let them come up to you. All right. So anyway, guys, hope that helps. Hope that's useful to you to some degree. LA, I definitely would recommend going there for minimum, or sorry, max two, maybe three nights. Because, and after that, I think you're probably going to get a bit bored of the place. There's not that much to do. The best thing, the highlight of, of anybody that, that's visiting I mean, I didn't have this, but I know this from people who used to visit. If they see a celebrity, it makes their, their day or makes their, their two, three days in L.A. Which is, you know, I understand. That's pretty cool, you know. So definitely, guys, two or three nights. Plan out San Diego. Maybe even Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara, beautiful place as well. Uh, you've got Vegas. But if you're a party person, check out Vegas. <laughs> so anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thanks. Bye-bye. Peter. Wow. 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 Wow.